Hi, I'm Caleb. I've been using model trains and videos for years, but I don't have the best track record when it comes to customizations. I'm trying to get better at it, so join me as I dive into the world of miniature modeling. This is Caleb's Trains. This video is not made for kids. I will be showcasing dangerous tools and toxic materials that are potentially hazardous. Children should not have access to these, and please remember to use proper safety techniques. Thanks. This is Garfield, a tale of two kitties. Wait, no. This is a tale of two Percy's. You're probably wondering why there are two. Well... <laughs> In the winter of 2022, I had a mission. I was going to make a movie. I would have all the characters redone with 3D prints since I didn't like the way my Bachman engines looked. At this point, I was sure I wouldn't be able to do the modeling to a passable level, so I commissioned the 3D prints from Green's Trains and asked him if he would also make the entire Percy model. His custom is incredible and was the reason I wanted him to do it. The rest of the prints went to Brendan Reese 10, who I was going to commission to make the rest of the cast. In the end, I didn't move forward with the project, and since Brendan hadn't started yet, I was able to cancel. Kayla! He's a good friend and understood. I still despised the Bachman Percy, so I didn't cancel the commission from Green. Fast forward to that summer, and I had a new wind of ambition to try my own hand at customizing 3D printed shells. I knew Green's Percy was still coming, but I wanted to give it a try myself. I figured making a spare wouldn't be too difficult. Famous last words. The shell was provided by the LBSC Thomas and printed by the train modeler while I visited him in the UK. I sanded the shell, smoke box, running board, and toolboxes and primed them with Tamiya primer, and of course filled in the gaps from the printing process. I went through multiple rounds of priming, filling, and sanding. It does get old. The British Percy then flew back home with me to the good old US of A, and I got his running board painted red. When masking the gray, I, I must have wrapped the tape too tightly because a couple of his buffers snapped off. After gluing those back on, I did... Nothing. The shell has spoken! I had the shade of green I intended to use, which is actually the same shade used during Series 5. It's a Volkswagen color named Willow Green, which I had to order custom mixed. This was like the most expensive can of paint I've ever purchased, and I wasn't about to let any go to waste. I wanted to spray Percy and Henry at the same time, but Henry was not a part of the initial print batch at the train modelers, so I was waiting for another supply drop with Henry included. All Percy could do was wait. Meanwhile, his American-born doppelganger was coming along. I had sent my old Bachman Percy to Green's trains. He'd done the priming, sanding, and filling on his print of the shell, which was already green. When I had first ordered the commission in the winter, I wasn't very particular about shades and colors. I liked the way the engines looked in Thomas and the Magic Railroad. So I told Green that something relatively close to that would be fine. He used Rustoleum Meadow Green, which was a nice color. Then the blue blitz happened, and I realized how much of a difference the paint choice makes. Meadow Green was nice, but I thought Willow Green was nicer. This is brilliant, but I like this. I felt really bad about scaling back the commission, but I knew I was going to have to repaint Percy's color to the Volkswagen shade. Luckily, Green hadn't done any lining yet and was very gracious about the unexpected change of direction. I've never been good with the technical stuff, and chassis work has always been daunting to me. I was happy that Green was going to be taking the lead on this one. I knew it would be a lot of work, well, good luck with that. but I didn't quite realize just how much work it would be. Green wasn't going to use the piston rods, crossheads, or cylinders from the Bachman Percy. Marklin rods were ordered, new pistons were printed, and the motor housing was cut down. Then he had to solve the crosshead problem. The crosshead is this piece right here, sitting on the slide bars. Green was engineering a complete replacement from the ground up. He went through many iterations, each time a matter of trial and error. In the end, he finally landed on a design that worked. The motor housing was refitted, and he changed the contacts to be mounted on the side by screws. A test run confirmed that the crosshead problem was solved. At last, Henry came. Which meant I could bust out the willow green. Once that dried, I masked everything except for Percy's dome so that I could spray the gold. This could have been hand painted, but I like the smooth finish that the spray paint leaves. Next was lining. As you may have seen in the Thomas video, I had decided to mask my lining. I thought Percy should have been pretty straightforward, no corners or angles like Thomas, just some simple stripes. 
The results weren't the best, and I'm not sure how it happened, but somehow Percy got a scratch. There was also a leak, and the paint was patchy in places. Then I had a big brain moment. What if I just cover the red and repaint the green so I don't have to start over again? That might have been a nice idea had I cut the tape and masked just the red. I didn't do that. See, the funny thing about paint is it works in layers. I really should have learned this lesson. I tried to take a shortcut, but it just ended up as a waste of time and materials. So much for not wasting green paint. It wasn't long after when Green's Percy arrived. He ran so smoothly, and it was great to see his fantastic handiwork in person. I sanded down my Percy and got them both applied with a new coat. I then got them ready to spray the gold of their domes. The shell from Green came out fine, but mine must have been feeling especially cantankerous. Good word. I guess I was just too eager to get the gold painted after the green coat, because when I took off the masking tape, some of the paint peeled with it. I fixed that, and then redid the pinstriping. Much better this time. Then, British Percy's paint peeled again, and I decided I'd get back to that later when addressing some of Henry's paint issues. This Percy officially became the spare. I used sewing pins that I also used to pin down my track for lamp irons. The whistle was 3D printed, and then I cut off the bottom of a nail for the safety valve. Got all the extra bits and bobs fitted on the backside too. I painted his underside black, and like Thomas, added plastic behind his front windows. When applying his numbers, I decided to just stick to the vinyl. If I had one more paint peeling issue, I was going to give up modeling and retire to someplace remote where no sane person would ever live. Like Canada. I did some light weathering on him, but nothing crazy, as I'm gonna need him to be clean for future purposes. You sussy baka! If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and doing all the usual YouTube stuff. It'd mean a lot. Thanks.